Welcome back, it's Jamie Hartley again from Crossfader and it's an exciting day from Pioneer today. They've just announced the public version of the new Rekordbox 5.0. The beta version's been out for a month or so now and it's been tested and now they've released the full version available to you, apparently for a free download for the export mode. It's still not free for the performance mode but if you've already got that version you can easily upgrade. Now we're going to have a look at the software. Remember this is the first day it's been released so there could be things when you're watching this video that have been ironed out, there could be issues that have been ironed out by then and there could be things that we may have missed um, but we're going to be diving into this software, getting our first look at it. The noticeable changes and the noticeable differences from the previous version of Rekordbox and just really highlight some of those things, what we like, what we dislike and just to share them with you. Remember to share, like, subscribe, thumbs up and all that good stuff to help us keep doing what we're doing and making videos like this. Let's get stuck into the software and actually look at both the export mode and the performance mode with a controller. So the first main noticeable difference is the brand new user interface. Now, I much prefer this. I think they've made much better use of the space that's available within the software. Everything looks a bit more sleeker, um, nice sort of black and white. Everything's really sleek. They have in the library, obviously the text is much smaller now. I like it like this, but I've noticed in the settings, if we go to the gear icon, you can make it much bigger by using in the view settings, the font size. You can make it as big as you like and make the line space bigger and just edit it how you like. So don't worry if you may be slightly short of sight. Next up is that everything seems to be in a very recognizable place. We've got a much bigger overview waveform, which is nice and a slightly bigger play waveform here as well. Um, but things like your cues and loops, they're all very self-explanatory in the same place, the grid in the same place, uh, the beat jump feature in the export mode, all of the same stuff, the library features are all down in the same place. It feels very natural to kind of transition from Rekordbox 4 over to Rekordbox 5. The next thing that Pioneer is shouting about about this new update to Rekordbox is it's analyzation and the performance of the actual software and the engine that's built into the software itself. Now it's notorious for Rekordbox 4 basically is notorious for really bad track analysis especially on anything other than house music with the straight 4x4 kick. So I've pulled a few tracks here that were analyzed in the old Rekordbox. Um, you can tell from the waveforms here the grid is definitely not on beat and some of the tracks are analyzed at totally wrong BPM. So I'm going to reanalyze these tracks and just see what it comes up with. I'm hoping it does a much better job, but this is the first time I've seen this as well. I'm going to select them, right click and analyze tracks. Um, let's leave it at the widest range possible. Yeah, let's leave it at that for now and see what happens. Leave the key, press OK. And I'll let these analyze and we'll check. They said it had a faster track analysis than the previous version. It was still quite slow, but bear in mind I am running um, Audacity and QuickTime as well. So that could have sort of slowed down my CPU. Uh, looking at the BPMs, let's load the tracks in again. Has it got the grid right? Let's scroll forward to the first beat. Um, no. So I don't think that's changed much there. Mm, and again, BPM's wrong, grid's wrong. Again, BPM and grid. I think the BPM might be right, but the grid's wrong. So I think out of these five tracks, it struggled to change any of them. So not too good on the analysis front. Um, Obviously, this is the first release of the Rekordbox 5.0. Hopefully, this will be improved. I know in other DJ softwares, it is much better than Rekordbox. But there's hope still yet. You know, let's move on and see what else this new software offers. The next thing that's been long awaited is to be able to get tracks from your device and import them back to the Rekordbox software. It was the case in the old Rekordbox software that as soon as you export to your device, they're stuck there and you can't import them back to either another laptop or just your own laptop even. If you'd suddenly lost your music library but you still had it on a USB, we're suddenly then struggling. Now, if I just go, I've opened up my devices, I could, I'm guessing, if I just click and drag a playlist, there we go. We can click and drag it and it asks us whether we want to re-import, I've already got this track, but re-import it to my collection update the hot cues, or just skip and just add it to the playlist. If I was to say apply to all and go update collection, it'll then 
replace any hot cues or anything like that. From there, there's not much that's that different, to be honest, with the export mode of Rekordbox, just a sleeker interface, and those few little bits, mainly being able to re-import back from your device to the Rekordbox software. Now let's move on to performance mode and see what all the new fuss is about over on that side of the software. So the first thing to notice is we've still got this nice sleek new interface. We can do the horizontal view or vertical view. Both look absolutely great. I think it looks a bit cleaner than the last version. Um, the pads, for example, we can access all the different performance features just with this drop down. And there's loads we can access here. Um, even more than before, we've got the keyboard, which is a brand new feature. Um, enabling you to change the key of a track up and down in semitones. You can even do more than that and choose just a, a hot cue that you've got set to work from and go up and down in those semitones. For example, if I just press play on this one. Now, obviously, you may need the brand new XP1 to make the most of that feature that they've just announced along with Rekordbox 5.0. Um, but as you can see, we can do it just with the keyboard and I'm guessing we can map that out in the MIDI settings here. We might be able to map it out to certain pads and yeah, add in, let's have a look, keyboard, add in the keyboard pad and assign it to something like the DDJ RB and get rid of something like the slicer if we didn't want it and map it out that way. So even with the most basic of controllers, you can still access some of these really advanced features that have been added in Rekordbox 5.0. While we're talking about changing the key of a track, you can actually key sync as well, and it shows you the keys here, and you can go up and down in semitones, just like you can on the keyboard. But if I was to click the key sync button on an opposite track, it will read the track in the master player and just knock that track up or down in semitones so that they will mix in key seamlessly. You can turn that setting on and off. When you turn it off, it doesn't automatically jump back to avoid any accidents in the mix, and you've got to force it back down to the original key. Another really neat new feature is the fact that we can actually plug a USB device in and play off maybe one of our friend's USB devices and play the track straight from there. This is something you couldn't do before, which was really frustrating in Rekordbox, but here we have devices we can open up. I can go to any particular playlist and load it straight into the player. This is such a nice way to use and go back to back with this software. It's something been long awaited and I'm so glad they've added this feature in with the brand new update. Another big new feature that I'm a huge fan of is the quantize settings. If we go into the gear icon, we can navigate over to the controller tab and then into others. And all these settings, there's a lot more that we can do with it now. We can change the quantize settings for different features. For example, the loop or the hot cues. We can choose the different quantize values and even just enable or disable them. So for example, if you wanted the quantize to work with manual looping, but not with the hot cues, we can deactivate the hot cue um, quantize. Another thing that's really neat is this jump before reaching the next beat mode. What this means, and this was a big problem, I think, with Rekordbox previously, is when this isn't on, if I was to use the hot cue, sometimes you press it and it delays, it waits until it activates, which is really annoying. Obviously, you want to try and press this bang on beat, and sometimes you would press it bang on beat, but it still waited till the next beat, and it was almost like a glitch within Rekordbox. So now they've added this feature here in others. If we do this, jump before reaching the next beat, even if you're a bit late with the hot cue, it'll still jump back to that hot cue, but keep it quantized and keep it locked in time. So you'll notice sometimes it jumps back to about here on the waveform and that's because it's just keeping it in time. That's a nice neat feature that they've added in. Another one is if we go into the settings, we can also, is it under the deck options here? Beat sync, allow beat sync to work with double or half BPM values. So this is another thing. Sometimes we may have a hip hop track, for example, hip hop array. And then if I was to just search in my collection, let me find something that's much higher in BPM value, double the BPM, some sort of drum and bass track. Let's go right down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And here in the 170s, let's just jump on and add in just any drum and bass track on this side. Now, if we were to beat sync, beat sync on both sides, it will use it as the half time and the double time. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 
Nice, so we've got the drum and bass track, and we've got the hip-hop track. And it's not trying to double the hip-hop track's speed. Another really neat but simple thing they've added is in the grid options, being able to set the first bar mark and not just the first beat. So this will really help with phrasing if you decided that the first bar of the track was somewhere like this phrase here, for example. You can just click this button and it will set the first bar. So if you use memory cues or anything like that to visualize where the new phrases are, then this can obviously help in that situation. Other than that, there's not much difference. The only other thing really is we've got up to 16 hot cues available, but on just your normal controllers, this is kind of a bit pointless. To make the most of them, it's obvious where the new DDJ XP1 comes into play. Okay, so my personal opinion, there's quite a few new features in there which are quite exciting. A lot of the new features you're probably gonna make the most of with their new DDJ XP1. Just like Pioneer likes to do, they bring everything under one roof. Um, it's definitely an ecosystem they're building. It reminds me very much of the Apple business model. Um, I think they've just opened the doors a little bit being able to transfer tracks back and forth between devices so that other DJs can kind of transfer tracks to their friends' laptops and back and forth that way, which is a really nice, neat feature. But it's still all very much under one roof, under one hood. Um, the great thing about Rekordbox though is it's plug and play with pretty much everything um, that they produce. And they are still the industry standard in a lot of clubs and venues and places that I would play and a lot of regular DJs play out. So they've still got a hold on the market in that way. Um, I really like the keyboard feature they've added, but again, it's something that is featured in other DJ softwares. It's just, they've kind of, brought it out in a way that might appeal to the new turntable list on the market, especially with that new DDJ XP1 that we mentioned. Um, the other things that I really like is that they fixed that quantize setting with the hot cues. It's something that really bugged me with the last version of Rekordbox, and I hope they even update that on the CDJ, XDJ player firmwares as well, because that's a really annoying issue. The thing I'm really disappointed about is the track analysis. It still didn't look to be too great. Um, when it's anything other than your nice 4x4 house beats. Um, I really hope they get that fixed. Other softwares do a fantastic job of analyzing most music correctly, so I don't see what the issue is there. Hopefully it'll get fixed in a future update, especially because it's something there they seem to be shouting about, is the engine and the build of the software. Now, there's other little things that we haven't touched on, like it now works with the DJM S9 mixer. There was um, a pop-up that they've noticed something when, when I first installed it, they said they'd noticed something with the DJM S9 where the hot cues weren't as res responsive as they anticipated, but they're working on a fix and that's gonna come out at the end of September. Um, it is nice to see that everything is now working in unison. You can have a turntable setup, a controller setup, a CDJ, XDJ setup, and it all plugs and plays with this centerpiece of software. It is a very, the Rekordbox 4 version that I've been using for quite a while now, has been very stable, so I hope the stability is brought across and they've you know, it's provided more support for it and an even more stable software. I'm really excited to kind of play on it much more. Remember, this is just the first look and you know, I need to test it out with CDJs, XDJs. We've tested it out with controllers. It seems very responsive and works well. Um, we will let you know potentially in the comments if there's anything that we find after this video that maybe is an issue that we need to make you aware of. But I would say don't be afraid of downloading and basically upgrading your software. I've now got both versions. I've got Rekordbox 4 and Rekordbox 5 on my unit. So if Rekordbox 5 fails, I can always go back to the 4 version, which I know is trustworthy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, please, please comment below if you've got any thoughts about Rekordbox 5.0. If you've had any issues with it, to let others know, other viewers know, it really helps in the comments um, to get a discussion going and I'll do my best to reply to any questions that you guys have got. And thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe, thumbs up and like, share and do all that good stuff to help us keep doing what we're doing. I'll see you in the next video.